welcome to the Pig and Whistle Tales from Azeroth. As always here at the Pig and Whistle Inn in Stormwind, I go for a variety of subjects with regards to World of Warcraft. So grab a bottle or a pint, sit back and enjoy. This midweek episode, we'll be going over the What Are series, and we're going to be looking at what DKs are, what Death Knights are, the very first hero class of World of Warcraft, the ones that kind of broke the game back in Wrath of the Lich King because of how heroic this class was so to speak it was it was unkillable it was it was absolutely ridiculous but we're going to be looking at the specializations what each one does really in a pve and pve scenario if they're any good if they're like an easy class to jump into for newer players anything like that so let's get started death knight have three specializations you have blood death knight you have frost death knight and unholy death knight blood is your tanking specialization and Unholy and Frost are your DPS specializations. Um, Frost uh, kind of more relies on your hits more than anything uh, in terms of like big chunky hits, whereas Unholy is more pets as well as smaller hits, but the same amount of damage, if not more. Uh, Blood, uh, in terms of PvP, it, it's nothing great or magical. It, it's decent at like crowd control, but that's about it. Um, because you obviously have the same utility as uh, uh, Unholy and Frost, which is your grips, but I think you get like an extra stun or two. You're very sustainable with your own self-healing, etc. So DKs in PvE, or Blood DK in PvE anyway, PvP, sorry, isn't isn't the greatest, but no tank specialization is. If you're looking at Frost, you're looking at more of a setup composition, um, in my honest opinion. You're looking at like... Frost Evoker, Devastation Evoker, Frost Windwalker Monk, anything like that. Um, because uh, Frost, at its current iteration in PvP, isn't great. It has a shit ton of burst damage, like real burst damage. But out of that burst damage, you do nothing. Um, that's the downside to Frost at the moment. And it's it's not a fun playstyle because every minute you do a shit ton of unhealable damage... But during that minute, or like that minute cooldown, as it were, um, you, you don't do anything. You're kind of just... <sighs> yeah, I've, I've never been worried about Frost Death Knight when he doesn't have his cooldowns up. I, I kind of just stand there and tank him because he's not going to kill me. He actively won't kill me. I could outheal his damage without his cooldowns as a balanced druid, which is pretty bad, to say the least. Um, Unholy though is completely different it's very consistent damage um, plus it has a lot of anti-healing built into its damage so it just makes it more effective in PvP also it's more just probably fun because you're actively not doing unhealable damage and then nothing you're constantly doing damage you're constantly being a threat um, compared to Frost Death Knight but if you like the massive burst damage of Frost Death Knight and then doing nothing in between, by all means, you can go for that. Um, PvE might be different because you might go for like Breath of Syndragosa and stuff like that, um, whereas you don't in PvP. But I would say both DK's specs in raiding aren't too bad. I would say one is probably better than the other, which is the same in PvP, which is Unholy. I would definitely say Unholy is the better spec at the moment for death knights um it's not one that i've ever sort of uh, been uh, an enjoyer of i will say i've always picked frost because it's just easier to get into um and it's like my eighth sort of alt so it's nothing that i like really want to try and get into my death knight it's kind of the mindless one that i hop on if i'm ever feeling like wanting to just melee stuff and zug uh to be honest but yeah, in terms of PvE and PvP, I would say that Unholy is your go-to spec um, at the moment over Frost. In terms of pets, yeah, there is some sort of pet management with DK, but it's nothing as crazy as uh, like Hunter or Demo Warlocks. You have a stun for your pet, which is also a kick, um, but that's about the extent of it because your pet summon is an instant summon. Uh, I think you get it back every minute or so. It might be worth killing an Unholy DK pet. Actually, yeah, I, I, I might need to see about that. I need to see about the cooldown of the Unholy DK pet, but it's nowhere near as effective killing it as, say, like a Demo Warlock or anything like that. Um, Roleplay-wise, you are death itself. You are a dead warrior um, that was risen into undeath by the Lich King. 
Um, I'm pretty sure lore-wise, you're risen into undeath by the four horsemen now, if I'm not mistaken. Um, like, if you're going off of current lore, or new DKs should be risen by the four horsemen, but I'm not too sure on that, um, because there is technically no Lich King now. Bolvar is no longer the Lich King. Um, but yeah, you were a servant of the Lich King, and the whole intro quest to break free of his grasp is actually really cool. It's actually a really cool like introduction to your class, and uh, this is kind of like your starting zones for your other classes. So priest, um, warrior, all of them other classes. They all go to Elwyn Forest or uh, Dunmoreau, uh, Teldrassil. When you start off at level one, you start off at level fifty-five as a Death Knight. Well, it's fifty-five in Wrath. I don't remember what level it is now. I think it's level ten in retail. Um, but yeah, you go through your intro quests and uh, you are essentially trying to break free of the Lich King's grasp. And it is really cool. It is one of the better introductions uh, to a class, uh, in my honest opinion. And it's worth reading all of the quests in there because the role play element of a Death Knight is you are a dead warrior who uh, was resurrected to essentially serve the Lich King and you break free of that servitude. It, it's really cool. It's really cool. The pros and cons of them, the cons are they're not as mobile as other things, but the pros to that is that you can definitely slow some things down with Chains of Ice, drags things back to you with Death Grip. Um, the cons are it's kind of very inconsistent with all three of the specs. Um, in terms of you have one that's really bursty and then does no damage, you have one that's consistent, and then you obviously have one that is a tank, so can't really comment on that one. Um, I would like to see it as more of a consistent damage output for Frost anyway to kind of compete with Unholy um, in the likes of PvP and PvE. I would imagine Frost isn't doing great in PvE. I would imagine Unholy is a lot better. Um, yeah, I, I would definitely like to see a more consistent sort of element to Frost. That is one of its biggest cons rather than just big Borst and, um, yeah, not, not too much else in between. It's... Defensives are somewhat lacking, but I think it's got a bit more consistency now with the physical damage reduction from Death Strike. Uh, Anti Magic Shell is a very short cooldown, but IBF, which is Icebound Fortitude, is your biggest cooldown. Um, it's. Uh, I can't remember the exact cooldown of it, but I think it's not too bad at the moment, the cooldowns of uh, DKs. So. It, it could be classed as a pro or a con, depending on what class you are playing against into it. But I, I would definitely say it's more neutral. But that is it for this episode. Thank you all very much for listening, as always. Do check out everything down below. Twitch links, uh, TikTok, YouTube, everything down there. Thank you all very much once again. And go with Valor, friends. Goodbye, all.